A very good afternoon, uh, friends. I am uh, Dr. Naufal from Conceptual Orthopedics. So we have been hearing the topic of swelling from our third year MBBS itself. So we have learned from various textbooks how to exactly examine a swelling. So as you finish your MBBS and become a surgeon, the importance of swelling just increases. It comes into your daily practice and you will have to manage swellings. So it is not at all different in the case of orthopedics also. So in our conceptual app, Dr. Anil Dal was kind enough to give us examination of various swellings of different parts of the body. So sir has discussed in detail with the students about swelling around the elbow, around the knee, around the thigh, nerve swelling and how to go about examining these swellings and hence improve your approach to the patient. So today I just thought I'll just summarize one portion of examination of swelling which is called the identification of the plane of the swelling from where exactly the swelling arises and depending on that how the swelling is mobile or not. So let us let me start my PPT now. So which is the most mobile swelling which can happen in your body? The one which arises from the skin. So when you consider any swelling which is arising from the skin, it can be mobile in any plane. So if you consider a pedunculated skin tag, it is mobile in all the planes. It can move around in all the planes. And if it is any uh, fixed structure over the skin, still it's mobile in any of the plane. So here you can see a small skin mark which is mobile in any direction. In all the directions, it will be mobile. Now coming to the next layer. So under the skin, what does come? It is the superficial fascia. Now you have to know whether this particular swelling is arising from the skin, underneath the skin, or is it in the superficial fascia alone, whether it is free from the skin. So what do you do? You do something known as a pinch test. So there will be the swelling. Above that, if you are able to pinch the skin over the swelling, that means that the swelling is not arising from the skin. It is way beneath. And there is something known as a slip sign, which you would have heard in the case of examination of a lipoma. So when you try to just press the swelling, it tends to run away from your fingertip. So that is in the case of a lipoma, which is arising from the subcutaneous plane. So in the subcutaneous plane, it is still mobile. So here, this is the swelling. And in this case, when you press the finger, it tends to slip away. Whereas if it is arising from the skin itself, when you try to lift the skin, it will come along with the skin itself. Okay, you can't separately lift the skin away from the swelling. Now as you go deeper to the deep fascia, the swelling starts to become less mobile comparing to the superficial layers. Okay, so it comes less mobile and here it is when we describe the, uh, the movement of the swelling in two planes, like in a planar movement, whether it is moving perpendicular to per a particular structure or parallel to a structure. So let us uh, consider a few scenarios. If the swelling is way above the muscle, so you know it can move in two planes and if you contract the particular muscle, the particular swelling which is above the muscle tends to become more prominent. So that means the swelling is above the muscle. When you contract the muscle, the muscle becomes big and the swelling also appears to become big. The next is the swelling which arises from the surface of the muscle itself. So in this case, what happens? When at rest, you try to move the swelling, it can move in either plane. But when you contract the muscle, it becomes more prominent and when you try to move it, it will move only parallel to the muscle fibers. The perpendicular movement is not avail available or not allowed by the contracted muscle. Now what happens if the swelling is arising from within the muscle? So in this scenario, you will be able to visualize the swelling like when you see directly on inspection. But when you ask the patient to contract the muscle, the swelling size decreases. So remember that. This is the three scenarios in relation with the muscle. Now what happens if it is a bony swelling? So remember that almost every time it will be fixed. 
the swelling which arises from the bone is fixed to the bone and you can't move it in any plane. So if it is a small swelling, when you contract the muscle, it disappears. Or if it is a large swelling, where like in a case of a tumor or so, when it's uh, diffuse, you can't contract the muscle and try to cover it up. So in such scenarios, when you try to contract the muscle, it doesn't disappear. So remember that in case of bony swellings. Now let us see a few uh, special situations, like if the swelling is arising from a joint. So here I've taken the example of a knee joint. Let us see, in the knee joint, if there is a meniscal cyst. So let us consider uh, the junction between the middle uh, one third and the posterior one third, there is a meniscal cyst. So when a person is standing up, there is not much pressure of the joint on the meniscal cyst as such because it is more anterior that the pressure goes. Once the knee starts flexing, the pressure comes over the cyst and whatever contents is there in the cyst tends to pop out and you can see the cyst more evident in flexion. So this is change of size of a swelling along with movements of a joint. So this is a separate scenario or entity altogether. So this is the image which we have. The first image shows the swelling, the size of the swelling. You can appreciate that on the first image that it's quite small. Once the patient starts to flex, the contents inside the cyst becomes more prominent outside. Because as the knee flexes, the congruency is increasing, the space is reducing, the cyst contents tend to come out, uh, come outside and become more prominent. So in this image, you can clearly see when the patient is flexing, it becomes more evident. Now in the case of a knee effusion, so when there is a massive effusion, whatever synovial fluid that is collected inside the joint, it can go anywhere where it can find space. So in an extended or a relaxed position, wherein around 20 to 30 degree of flexion, the entire swelling will be visible from the anterior aspect itself. Now, when the swelling is a little bit smaller and it is only evident in the parapetalar region, you can demonstrate something known as a fluctuation. That is, when you keep your hand or press on one side, you can see more amount of fluid coming to the other side. So that is known as a fluctuation. For fluctuation to happen, the swelling should not be so massive. It should be somewhere between mild to moderate. Okay, so that is a special condition in which you examine swellings inside a joint. So the summary would be, swellings that arise from the skin are quite mobile in all planes. You go deeper, the swelling starts to become lesser mobile comparing to the superficial structure. So in the subcutaneous plane, it becomes, it is mobile, but you can identify it by the pinch test or the slip sign. The deep fascia, less mobile, biplanar moment. If it is arising within the muscle, it vanishes on contracture. If it is uh, above the muscle, it becomes more prominent. A swelling that arises from the bone is always immobile, unless and until if it has fractured and it is a loose body which is roaming around. So bony swellings are usually fixed, non-mobile, and it can vanish if the muscle over it can cover it by contraction. So this is the summary which I wanted to give. Thanks a lot.